News at one. Let's turn attention to business now. The federal government has reviewed plans to review rates of mining licenses and other sundry fees paid by mining operators in the country. The Minister of Solid Minerals Development, Dr. Delia Laki, while speaking during a consultative meeting with stakeholders in the mining industry, emphasized the imperative of the review to boost the capacity of the government to effectively reposition the mining sector. Highlighting efforts to reposition the mining industry, the minister revealed that aside from the ongoing reforms, the federal government is sanitizing the mining environment through the newly unveiled mining marshals, which he affirmed has been conducting operations in parts of the country to protect legitimate, uh, legitimate to rather, miners and combat illegal mining. The Director General of the Mining Cadastral Office, Mr. Badaya Nkom, who also chaired the Fees Review Committee, stated that the committee recommended new rates that are affordable and will enhance the competitiveness of the fiscal regime of the mining sector in comparison with regional and global standards. But away from then, our latest report from the Stanley Kibetis shows that the Purchasing Managers Index rose marginally to 51.1 in the month of April 2024, occasioned by the showdown and slowdown in rate of change in prices and output charges. The PMI survey report reveals that inflation and repressions softened in the Nigerian private sector during the month as against the position in the previous month. The PMI ticked up to 51.1 in April from 51.0 in March 2024, uh, pointing to a fifth consecutive monthly improvement in business conditions in the country's private sector. PMI ratings above 50.0 signal an improvement in business conditions on the previous month, while ratings below 50 show deterioration. And now the Center for the Promotion of Private Enterprises is asking the Central Bank of Nigeria to adopt a framework that minimizes volatility in the customs duty exchange rate. On our flagship program, Business Nigeria, the CEO of the center, Dr. Moda Yusuf, highlighted implications of frequent changes in the customs duty exchange rate on the business community. The negative in this is that it is extremely difficult for businesses to plan. Mm. Now, you will see that the rates have been fluctuating. Yes. You know, Sometimes it goes to as high as maybe 1,004, 1,003. Mm. Sometimes it comes as low as 1,000, 150, 1,002. Now, the point here is that businesses are highly averse to uncertainty. Yes, we must commend the CBN, no doubt, for the progress that has been made in stabilizing the currency and particularly in ensuring that at least we have some strength, some appreciation uh, in, the, in the exchange rate. But volatility is not a good thing for any economy because investment by its very nature is a question of risk taking. And the way to help investors is also to minimize the risk that they are taking so that they can progress with investment, progress with job creation with some level of certainty and confidence. Now, as we speak now, the business has con I mean, uh, grappling with the challenges with volatility, which has reduced anyway in the foreign exchange market. These are products of the reform, and it will take time for this reform to properly settle. Outside Nigeria, Asian stocks surged to the highest in 15 months a day, led by tech and Hong Kong stocks while the yen put more distance from recent 34-year lows to count the week that saw suspected intervention from Japanese authorities. MSCI's Brodex Index of Asia Pacific shares outside Japan was last off 1%. Hong Kong's Hansing Index rose 1% on track for a ninth consecutive day of gains and its longest winning streak since January 2018. European bosses are also set for a higher open with Eurostox 50 features up by 0.25%, German DAX features 0.24% higher, and FUXI features up by 0.15%. In many features for the S&P 500 rose to uh, by 0.29%, while NASDAQ features are up 0.58%.
And in the meantime, latest report reveals that Turkish annual consumer price inflation climbed to 69.8% in April, a bit below expectations for the highest since late 2022. Finance Minister Mr. Mehmet Simek, reacting to figures, said April's month-on-month -month inflation was 3.18% compared to 3.16% in March after annual inflation reaches its peak in May. It will begin to decline sharply lying with the predictions of analysts. According to the Turkish Statistical Institute, the biggest annual consumer price rise was in education, for which prices rose uh, by 103.86%, followed by restaurant and hotels at 95.82%. The central bank has hiked rates by 3,650 basis points since June, including a 500 basis point rise in March due to curb the rising inflation outlook. A new data from Toronto Regional Real Estate Board shows that home sales declined in April for a third straight month and prices crept up as over two decade high interest rate kept the lead on housing market recovery in Canada's main metropolitan region. The, according to the data, it shows that sales declined by 3.4% in April from the previous month after falling by 2.4% in March. Average home prices were up 1.5% last month to 1.12 million are Canadian dollars, the highest since December last year, while new listings were down by 5.9%. Home sales surged strongly in December and January, pointing to a revival in the market in anticipation of interest rate cuts by the Bank of Canada. But a frenzy fizzled out from February as slower than expected cooling inflation and a relatively strong economy pushed back hope of a rate cut. While economists and analysts are expecting the first 25 basis point cut in interest rate by the Bank of Canada in June or July, the Bank of Canada has kept its key overnight rate at a near 23-year high of 5% since July last year. And in the crude oil space now, prices edge higher earlier today but headed for their steepest weekly loss in three months as uncertainty about demand and high interest rate drove a sell-off limited by the prospect that OPEC Plus will continue to curb output. U.S. Wex Texas Intermediate Crude sell at $78.95 per barrel, while Brent Crude Features experienced an awkward price margin of 0.02%, selling at $83.69 per barrel. And Bonneland recorded a price decline of 0.67%, selling at $84.86 per barrel. And for the OPEC basket, crude oil dealers offer $87.17 per barrel, with a downward price reveal of 1.75%.